experts. Ntlantla Mabaso Eyewitness News, Durban. The Western Cape government says more than 80,000 residents in various parts of the province are still without electricity following a severe storm in the Cape. Speaking at a briefing this afternoon, local government MEC Anton Bredal says ESCOM is working around the clock to restore power in affected areas. Relief operations are in full swing across the province following devastating rain and strong winds over the weekend. Bredal says he's pleased that with the work done so far in response to the adverse weather conditions. ESCOM on Monday morning at 82,000 people without energy and electricity. So they also trying their utmost best and tonight they will repair electricity flow to 7,200 people in Kailitsa and hopefully 3,200 people in Kalidan. And the Ekuleni serial rapist was convicted on 90 counts of rape as hoping to serve a sentence at a psychiatric facility. Gosinati Pagati terrorized the community between 2012 and 2021 when he was arrested. Orin Singh has more. The legal aid attorneys representing Ekuleni serial rapist and Gosinati Pagati firmly believe he is mentally unstable. Judgment was expected to be handed down to Pagati this week following his guilty plea to 148 charges. But at the 11th hour, Pakati's defense presented a report that suggests he should serve his sentence at a psychiatric facility. But state witness and section commander for forensic psychology investigative services at SAPS, Colonel Kirsten Clark, disputes this and says Pakati made logical decisions when committing his crimes. His behavior shows that he is able to think logically. He is able to make decisions using the information he has in front of them. Consider his options and choose an option and work off that option. A partly cloudy Thursday in store for Hoteng tomorrow with isolated morning thunder showers. Lerato Hufela, Eyewitness News. Eyewitness News on 947. For more, click ewn.co.za. Hashtag MSW. You may begin to feel anxious or excited. Honest, deliberate, engaging, uncensored. High dosage administration can cause adverse reactions. And most importantly, independent in mind and execution. This is a normal response. Are you ready? We're our sports worldwide. I just want to focus on the box. Um, I thought the box were going to win that game because uh, if you had our kicking boots on, we should have won the game probably by, by two or three points. And uh, it's starting to be a problem, uh, our kicking game, because many people might say that Mani Libok uh, was in playing the best game of his life. I think maybe we should give Mani some uh, Jacob's coffee. Unfortunately, it is the way it is. That's rugby and people are going to judge you on the basis of that. Um, Aishwin Willems, uh, t- Manana, the room dividers here in studio, the Australian project. But how wise is it to begin a project in January, knowing that eight months later you are going to have the World Cup? Should the project not then begin post the World Cup so that when you leave out the big names, as you've mentioned earlier on, then it's understandable. But but Rob, let's let's look at also the Australian rugby competition. They've, they've hit the ceiling yeah. in, in terms of how far they can progress. Without South Africa playing with them, They've actually regressed if you look at both countries because they just play against each other. What's been the difference? What can we learn from the Wales experience? What stood out for you? It was a class outfit. They went up against an opposition of which they, you could see that they knew exactly that Australia's up for the taking. The confidence and the belief. So to foster that in a pool game um, before the knockout stages, I think that really is what, the, what was the telling takeout for me in the game. Robert Marawa, live on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM, and Sowetan Live. Hashtag MSW. Oh man, so good to see Namibia leading 14-0 against Uruguay. That game currently underway, 19 minutes into it, Rugby World Cup. Can they keep it up? Well, we'll find out. Well, just as I speak, eh? What has Uruguay done? Have they scored? Yeah, it's a try. So 14-5. So don't you worry, wherever you are around the country, the continent or the world, I'll keep you updated uh, with all that is happening regarding uh, the Rugby World Cup. All the updates and a whole lot more. It's kickoff time. The mighty box take on the world. He's got one already and he's going to get another. 
The Rugby World Cup. All the news. All the views. Springboks with a penalty advantage. All the action. Right here on Marawa Sports Worldwide. They have to scramble. Hashtag MSW with Marawa on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Sowetan Live. Right, so just a quick rugby update as well. Samoa head coach Selaila Mapusua has shaken up a couple of things. It's uh, the back row, especially midfield uh, for the must-win Rugby World Cup, the Pool D game against Japan tomorrow. Uh, remember, they fell to Argentina 19-10 last week. Samoa uh, gave the starts as well to New South Wales flanker Teleni Sao, as well as the Leon number 8, Jordan Tafua, in place of Theo McFarlane. So a couple of shake-ups. Ed Fido taking over though uh, Nigel on the right wing so let's uh, find out as well what those changes mean we're very wary of, of Japan strengths in terms of their uh, their, their, their speed um, and and also their um, their never say die attitude as, um, and they're very uh, technically correct in, in, in how they play so we'll be looking to counter um, their strengths and, and, and also implement uh, how we want to play uh, in terms of using our, um, our our physicality and 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 just doing the basics well, I think is, is, is going to be the, the the key for us and and, and and making sure that we can absorb the brush the, the pressure that uh, that Japan will, will will be putting on us and and, and also on, on on the other side make um, trying to inflict the same kind of pressure um, on on Japan. So we thought. That uh, the changes made were, was reflective of um, our opponents that were playing. Um, we know that uh, Japan are a very uh, well-disciplined, uh, efficient team, and uh, the changes that have been made um, we see as uh, suiting the style of game that we want to play, as, as well as um, uh, adding um, adding a bit more uh, variety in, in, in our attack as well. So um, that's that's the main reason for the changes. Uh, all right, talk about uh, Japan. Well, they continue their preparations at the start in Wallon in Toulouse in France as Japan coach Jamie Joseph announced his squad uh, for the must-win Pool D showdown. Now, the Brave Blossoms, well, they limited their changes to two after losing to England 34-12 in that game last week. The Samoan guys, depends how they play the game, but used to their coaches, very well coached, very experienced coaching team, show a lot of variety in the way they play the game. And... I feel they've got a much better squad than they did in the last World Cup. Um, they showed that against Argentina, so we've got a massive challenge here us. Uh, incredible resilience against a really strong Argentinian team. We've got to be at our very best to, to, to beat them, but we've had a really good really good week. I uh, felt that we've got a plan in place for what we experienced in England in the second half last, last week uh, around when it gets tough and what we need to do. Um, not just physically tough, but mentally tough and when the test match is on the line. All right, looking forward to my conversation in studio. Also coming through live on the YouTube channel, so you can switch on to the YouTube channel and watch, comment, and be part of the conversation. And Paul Makola is here in studio. It's the infamous room divider. So we could have won the game. We had a chance to win it in the 79th minute. We lost by five points against the world number one team. To miss a, to miss a penalty, uh, to not take a drop goal, to not be in a position to ex- execute on those things, I think that's the lesson perhaps that we needed to learn. I would select the team that would face France in the quarterfinals up against Tonga. I don't care. We're the defending champs. It's not about giving caps or test caps or resting. It's about defending what is ours. Remember, we lose against a French team. We get to OR Tambo the following day. And that's the end of the story. Says a man who's used to flying first class, eh? He knows how quickly that flight can be. It's the infamous room dividers. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. was Robert, Tando and Ashwin. Ashwin. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Well, believe me, I wouldn't be lying if I told you that one of the most gifted and talented footballers you could ever think about and ever to emerge from this country. Such a marvel to watch. Such a gifted, talented footballer. And yet with all that skill, controversy, misfortune at times has somewhat lingered around. Well, he's here to tell his story. He's here. I was actually saying to him off air, I don't think we've ever had a sit-down conversation. I've had to speak to him, I think, um, several times when he is one man of the match. And touchline, that's literally all it was. I mean, uh, you watch this man play and all you want to do is just be in awe of the gift 
that he has. Today he's going to be sharing his highs, his lows, and I guess where he is, just from a footballing perspective. Is he contracted to a football team? Doesn't know what a contract looks like. Hey, when was the last time they gave him a proper contract? <laughs> Those are some of the questions. Hopefully, uh, we'll get down and get stuck into. He's going to reflect on this midfield genius and poor Bibo Makula. Our special guest here tonight. You can be part of the conversation. You can send us your WhatsApp voice notes, your comments or questions. I will be more than welcome. Paul, good to see you, man. Welcome to the show. Ah, thanks for having me, Rob. It's good to be here. Why has it taken so long for us to have a sit-down conversation? So, you know, it's easier to talk to David Beckham overseas than to talk <laughs> to you. Uh, I think uh, because I've been away for so long. Yeah. Uh, been up and down, but at least I'm back at home now. And it's never too late. You talk about the ups and downs. <laughs> In terms of your travels, yeah, would you say the same in terms of your football? Has it been as up and down as your trips from Gauteng to Cape Town to Polokwane? Yeah, I would say in a nutshell, yeah. I mean, I started off my career in Free State, mm. which is out of the province. Came back to Joburg, went to Cape Town, came back Cape Town. I went to Polokwane, and I'm back at home now. So yeah, it's been ups and downs. Well, would you say more ups than downs, though? I would say, yeah, more ups than downs. With the ultimate highlight being what? Uh, the ultimate highlight being, I think when I was at Pirates, I, I played my best football. Yeah. And I think in my career, my biggest highlight of my career is making my national uh, debut at 29 mm. and scoring in my first game. Because for the longest time, even when I was at Free State, uh, people used to look at it like, why is this guy not being selected in the national team? You know, but I never lost hope, never folded. And uh, when it was time, yeah. it happened. But why do you think it took so long? Maybe from my side, I would say inconsistency. Mm -hmm. And I remember at one time we had Pirates and we were sitting and I was sitting next to Benny, and they asked the question about who of your teammates do you think has got so much potential mm. and can really go far, but they're not showing it. And Benny singled out me, and he said, there is so much potential in this player, mm. and he can really go far, but he's in a nutshell. He needs to go out. And, and I think after that happened, uh, I took that advice, and... I moved forward with it. What did he pinpoint? I mean, what did he say to you? Did he say you were holding back somehow? Was he saying, what did he explain to you? Yeah, he was literally saying to me, you're holding back. Yeah. Yeah, Pirates has so much quality players at the moment, but you're one of the top players in the team, but you need to show it on the field of play. Uh, and yeah, that was that. And I took that and I, I kind of worked on myself also. And it just gave me the uh, good rewards as well. But having having gone through that experience, and you got somebody who's top class like Benny giving you that level of advice, did you take it as what? Did you take it as maybe you showing what you were capable of more in training, but then trying to bring that training onto the field? You then hit almost like let's say hit a ceiling, and you were not able to further express yourself. Yeah, I think I was, uh, and obviously I think I was, there were so many great players at the time at Paris. Yeah. There was Andila, there was Uba, there was Efeso, Mieni, and obviously I came from Free State, yeah. you know. I kind of like, maybe I didn't believe at the time that I was good enough to be here and to compete with the, with the, be with the best in the country at the yeah. time. And I think that Benny kind of reminded me that you're not here by chance, you know. You've been selected based on merit and what you can do on the field of play. And you need to show it. Mm. You know, at training, I see what you can do, even in the games, but you need to be consistent and let it all go out. You know, bring that kid in you. Yes. Yeah. And that's exactly what I did. And but, I started. Yes. Go ahead, because I was going to say that in, in that block, if I remember correctly, the block um, 2014, let's say 2013, 2014 season up until 2017 yeah. would have been your best football. At Orlando Pirates. Most definitely. What was it 
based on what? Was it more the technical team, the coach at the time, encouraging you to be better? Was it still the hunger, the desire that you brought from Yelakoto? What was it? I think it was it was more of the hunger and the desire to actually be like, uh, I, I just didn't want to be a player that once played for Pirates, but they didn't achieve anything, yeah. you know? And I kind of pushed myself to be like, you know, I have it in me to actually push myself and go further. You know, I started the free state. Um, when I started at free state, before I actually signed for free state, when I was still at the academy at Jersey Queen, mm -hmm. there was Opa, there was uh, Tide Molangwani, there was Patrick Pungwa, you know, a lot of players. And when Opa signed, Patrick signed in the PSL, I was still in the development. Yeah. And it kind of hit me that, you know what, you need to work to get there. And unfortunately, unfortunately for me, I to start there and not at Pirates or at Vets like the other guys. Mm -hmm. And that kind of like was a push factor for me to actually be like, you actually want to be there, mm -hmm. so you need to push yourself. Now you're here, you, there's no time to relax. And time is flying by so fast. You know, today mm -hmm. you're 20, the next thing you're 30. And you look at it, you haven't achieved anything. Well, fast forward, 2023, you're 37. Yep. You know, and, and, and that's where you are, you know, it's not even quarter to 40. Um, but we'll get to that conversation because it's an important one to say, as you start getting closer, you start creeping into, um, you know, almost the age of 40. What, what then? What then for your career? What then when you move forward? But I want to I want to take you on that journey where you then have to go. And I use the word have to. Yeah. Because you will correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But Cape Town was a trip you had to make because of what had happened at Pirates. The big question is, what had happened at Pirates that you had to then go and find a different home in Cape Town? Um, what happened at Pirates was the season before I was playing well. And I remember in some games I was actually captain of the team uh, prior to that. And I had a good relationship with the coaches, they really rated me highly, mm. even the chairman. And the following season, when it was time for pre-season, I uh, got a call to be like, you need to come to the office uh, to come see the chairman. And when I got there, <coughs> the chairman spoke to me mm -hmm. and he sat me down. He said, listen, you've done so much for this team and I respect you and we really appreciate your work at the team. And But unfortunately, like any other company, when there's retrenchment and all that, you know, you got to understand, you know. But also he was like, you know, I value you so much that I'm going to, there's a token of appreciation for your work that mm. you've done for the team. And this is that, you know. And he said something like, you know, I'm, I'm getting old, you know. And sometimes we make decisions that come back to bite us, but... You know, with you, and he said specifically me and Tabo Matlab at the time mm. that he wasn't sure about us leaving the team. But it's what the technical team had decided at the time, which were the coaches, you know. Mm -hmm. And for me, I, I understood where the chairman was coming from and I understood what he said to me, but I just didn't understand the part where he said the technical team because I felt like we were good. Mm -hmm. And if there was anything with the technical team that I was doing, they would have told me and been like, you know, the season before. Yeah. I mean, you made me captain uh, in Africa. With the, you know, I, I felt like it was, I was on a good form and I was doing well. The following season, I'm not there. But yeah, that was that. But I mean, I also had the right to ask the coaches of what happened mm -hmm. before I could get my clearance. But did you, did you approach them? Did you ask them? Yeah. All right. Find out after the break what happened when he did approach the coaches and asked them what is happening, what is going wrong, because you've got to look back the previous season. I mean, Mpo had played almost 1,600-odd minutes of football in the season and in the professional season of so many games and rotation and squad rotations, etc. That is considered a lot in the modern game in South Africa. So find out about that and a whole lot more. He is my guest up until the top of the hour. 
It's here, the Rugby World Cup. Springboks with a penalty advantage. Tracked by Marawa every day. Hashtag MSW on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Sowetan Live. Rand is up for grabs in the Hollywood Bet Spinner Zonke Jackpot Race. Spin for two rand or more between 8.30 and 10.30 every Wednesday, Friday and Saturday night. T's and C's apply. Hollywood Sportsbook is a licensed betting operator. Hollywood Bet supports responsible gambling. No persons under the age of 18 years are permitted to gamble. Winners know when to stop. South African Responsible Gambling Foundation toll-free counseling line 0800 006 008 or WhatsApp help to 076 675 0710. Picture this. You've got your eye on the new Galaxy Z Flip 5 or Z Fold 5, but you're wondering how to make it yours without breaking the bank. Samsung's trade-in offer is the answer. Trade in your old phone and get 15,000 Rand cash back. Yep, that's 15,000 Rand cash back guaranteed when you make the switch. Say bye to flat and hi to flip. Visit Samsung.com for qualifying devices. Offer valid until 30th September 2023. T's and C's apply. Power, precision, and persistence. The P-Series Baki from GWM. Isn't the P-Series SA's best value for money, Baki? Yes, with legendary off-road ability, a luxurious cabin with 360-degree camera, traffic sign recognition, lane assist. Plus, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The GWM P-Series double cab range is unbelievable value for only 395,000 Rand with 50,000 Rand deal assist included. Visit GWM.coza now to get your P-Series Baki. T's and C's apply. GWM, GWM celebrating 16, 16 years in SA. SA. Are you feeling a little overcommitted? Like you don't know how to let go and say goodbye? Is your tech holding you back from being as fresh as you know you can be? Don't let your phone clash with your vibe, your laptop hold you back, or your washing machine turn your fab into drab. With Rentoza, you can match your tech to your look, with monthly payments and the freedom to upgrade and downgrade whenever you want. That's fresh. Commitment is missing. Just Rentoza it. Save extra on a winning lineup from Checkers with great deals like Lay's or Doritos chips, 120 or 140 gram. Buy any three and save 20%. Ola Rich and Creamy Ice Cream, 1.8 liter for only 59.99 each. Save 15 Rand. And Twin Saber 2 ply toilet rolls, 24 pack for just 169.99. Valid until this Sunday, only at Checkers and Checkers Hyper. Hi, me again. If you know what this ridiculously short 30 second ad is for, you'll probably know what I hate most about it. Yes, it's the legal line. Pineapple AFSP 48650 is underwritten by Old Mutual Insurer or Licensed AFSP and Non-Life Insurer. T's and C's apply. I mean, who cares? Have you ever heard anyone say, wow, did you hear that pineapple ad? Go to pineapple.co.za for 100% insurance, 0% other stuff with all those super interesting, invaluable T's and C's. Well, I haven't. I've also never heard a complete ad where we... Infamous room dividers. Not only Sia has defended him, I can put on the table, Jacques Nindaba has defended him, Russ Rasmus has defended him, Russ even saying that Bunny is playing brilliant fly half rugby at the moment. Johnny Saxton says Bunny did some amazing things like setting up the try, he's a handful with the ball. Robert say one thing, where we are now, we need a recognizable kick. Do we have? We can bring him on. You don't have to have a kicking fly off. I don't recognize Jesse Creel. There is space, Robert. That's why you left out a hooker in Joseph Dweber to bring in a Pollard. Then play him, not off the bench, because time is running out. And you choices. start them as early yeah. as Tonga. There's, There's only, only one, one game, game left. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. You yeah. start it as early as now. You don't bank on something that we don't have. Shots fired. It's the infamous room dividers. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. was Robert, Tando, and Ashwin. Ashwin. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Wednesday nights. Soccer nights. Your nights. Yeah, summary of the conversations currently happening on the YouTube channel. It is uh, Masibonge. Alesha says that uh, Bebo, that's all he says. He just reminded him of his nickname. And one of the great players of Orlando Pirates, the Kumalos. Thank you so much. Tattoo 3 says such maturity. Um, Yoradile says that adjust the microphone. Yeah, we're going to adjust the microphone. All for you. <laughs> Anything for you. 
Well, adjust the bike, we'll climb into yeah. that uh, camera, whichever way you want it. And Paul Makula is my guest uh, tonight. going to take your WhatsApp voice notes. Plenty of those coming through. Uh, you can tell one of the popular members, one of the leaders at Orlando Pirates here in studio with us. So as I said, you can follow, you can track, you can uh, interact on the social media platforms. You can watch on the YouTube channel or just simply switch on. And Paul, as you were saying, you felt the need when you were being told that. But firstly... You talked about a token that the chairman gave you. Are you able to share what the token <laughs> was? Uh, unfortunately, I, I can't. Personal? Can I not yeah, it's very personal. It's very personal and yeah. Was it an emotional token? Was it not a non-financial token? Uh, it was an emotional token. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I can say for now. Yeah. Yeah. One that you still hold till today. Yep. So it's one that you can't dispense of. It's one that will be with you for life. Most definitely. And what does it mean to you? Uh, it means a lot to me, Rob, uh, because I feel like uh, footballers sacrifice so much yeah. to be at the top, which they never speak about. People just see you on the field of play, performing great uh, miracles, whatever, week in, week out. But there's so much that goes into you being on the field in a day and doing your best. And I feel like, for me at the time, the chairman just showed me his appreciation for my work. And I'll forever be grateful for that. So what sh chairman showed you in terms of appreciation and the token versus what was coming through now uh, from the technical team? Yeah. You approach them, you want to know what is wrong, what do they say? Well, first, uh, I tried to call the coach, which was Micho, Coach yeah. Micho at the time. Couldn't get a hold of him. Um, I, call, I called Coach Rulani, which I have a, a great friendship with, which I've had for years yeah. since I was really young, playing in the <clears throat> dusty streets. Uh, so I called him and I was like, Coach, what's going on? I see I've been released. Is there something that I did? Is there something that maybe, you know, you guys could have shared with me before? You know, I mean, it's a new season. So this means I have to go look for a work right now. And he said, hey, Bibo, honestly speaking, I'm in London. He was in London, I think, attending something at Liverpool. Yes, yeah, I remember when you, when you went to yeah. Liverpool. Correct. And he said to me, Bibo, you know, I value you so much and I respect you, but the names that I got from the team of the players that were going to be released this season, mm -hmm. your name was not there. Wow. Your name was not there. And I feel like your name was not there because if I had seen that your name was there, I would have been like, nope, he's not leaving. You know? And I believed that and I respected that. Mm -hmm. And I, I moved on, Rob. So then how did your name, did you ever figure it out? I mean, you're a smart guy. You're an intelligent yeah. guy. Always have been. And, and that's the one admiration I've had about you both on and off the field, your ability yeah. to switch on mm. um, and use your intellect in a constructive manner. Yeah. Did you then find out, figure out how then your name, because here's an assistant who's saying, I know nothing about it. Your name was never there. Then mm. how does your name creep into the list? I still have no idea. Till today. Till today. You know, but... You Do you know, speculate? I, I don't like working on speculations, you know. But I've heard you know, people speak. Uh, I won't say what they've been saying, but to be honest with you, the truth always comes out. Rob. Mm -hmm. Especially if, you know, you did someone bad. And, yeah. I, let's just say I know. I know what happened. Mm -hmm. And I know who put my name there. For me... And Tabo, mm -hmm. to be released at the time. And for me, it's water under the bridge. I'm over there and I've healed from that. And I moved on a long time. But you know, a lot of your fans haven't healed because they don't know. They still sit. And I'm sure yeah. you sit with that question everywhere you go because it took me by surprise. Yeah. Uh, Rob, one day I'll speak about that and I'll let people know, especially my fans, Yeah. on my podcast. And nice. I'll tell them everything about my career, what has happened, and yeah. Was Floyd still at Pirates then? 
Floyd was still at Pirates, and he was one of the people that actually, when I went to go see the chairman, he called me aside at the office, and he gave me a big hug, and he said to me, people, I don't know what's going on, and yeah, I wish you all the best, and that was that. When when you left, what, what was it? It was still time left on your contract? Was it contract yeah. up? I still had a season left on my contract. So they paid you out? They did. In full? The chairman did, yeah. In full. And yeah, I think he, he took care of me in that, mm. in that in those regards, yeah. When you say you you've healed, it it, it says to me, number one, you're human. Mm-hmm. Number two, there was an emotional attachment you had with the Land of Pirates. It structures mm. the nineteen thirty seven team was embedded in you. Was it was what seven years? You were going on ten years uh, being at Orlando Pirates, and and that would have meant a lot. You would have been w- within the distinguished group of players at Orlando Pirates to clock double figure years at the club, and for that to almost unceremoniously be chopped down like that. Yeah. Tell me about the deep hurt. Was that the beginning for you, where emotionally there was a bit of a rattle, where? you were starting to deal with life in a different way and that affected then your game when you land in Cape Town. Maybe talk me through that. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be honest, it it hit me hard. Uh, I wasn't ready for that. But uh, as soon as I moved to Cape Town, I arrived, let's just say at home. I got to feel at home because there was Benny. Yes. There was Donna who was at the time an ambassador for the team, mm. and he made me feel at home. There was Kemet, which, whom I had played with at Pirates. There was Mubara. There was uh, Skilo, yeah. Norodin. And I think that kind of helped me to quickly forget about what had happened, you know? But also, yes, it took a bit of time for me. I remember my first game at Orlando playing against Pirates. And I remember I almost scored in that game and I just didn't know how I would have what I would have done if I had scored in that game. But yeah, I was emotional, I was a bit of a wreck at the time, but yes, the first few games at, at CT, I wasn't really myself, but mm-hmm. uh two games into it I I I, I got into myself. I, 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 I settled and I did what I could do and I forgot about pirates for a bit. And I focused on Cape Town City. But the presence of Benny helped. Hundred percent. It really did help. And yeah, even you know, I really appreciate Benny and, and I'll never forget what he did for me. Mm. Because I think at the time I wasn't really sure if like what was gonna happen, you know. And there was nothing concrete from anywhere else and I was just confused and I just didn't understand. Mm. what was going on and what had just happened. You know, I was having, I don't know, deja vu. I remember going to the office at Fly Africa to go see them for the last time. Mm. And even the receptionist, the ladies that used to, the mamas that used to work there uh, and make us tea, you know, they were all emotional, you know. And, but it is what it is. And, but when I, Walked out there with my clearance. Yeah, it was it was just a surreal moment for me. And yeah, but I'm just glad I, I got to turn the corner on very quick and I moved on. Coach Olga Rinkering, who then took over from Benny. Yeah. Was he a continuation of Benny or was he maybe a beginning of a different journey for you where you were starting to then question yourself and the frequency of how often you get to play? I think he was more, he was a continuation of Benny in the sense that he was from Netherlands. Yeah. Uh, similar type of football, not, not a lot of changes. And I felt like with the way that I played, I would fit in with this style uh, almost immediately. Mm. Yeah, but, you know, the nature of my contract at uh, Cape Town was, it was, how do I put it? 
it was very complicated, Rob, mm. in the sense that I needed to play matches for me to actually make some form of uh, a bonus or whatever, you know, because I went there for three years. There was no signing on fee on my end. So for me to make the signing on fee, I needed to start matches and I'd get certain bonuses, but also that was not in my control. Okay. You know, I signed that contract believing in my ability that, yeah, I'll start almost every game, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But obviously it's not up to me and not knowing there would be influence from this and that and, yeah. But I feel he was a good coach and he gave me a chance and yeah. whenever he gave me a chance, I performed to the best of my ability. So who introduced the pay-as-you-go contract? Well, when I went there, when I spoke to the chairman himself, John Gometers, he, was, he said, it's, listen, the team doesn't really have the money that Pirates has, you mm. know, sponsors, in terms of sponsorships and all that. And you, I think I was 31 at the time. When you went to, there. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and he said, no. For players over 30, it's difficult for us to give them signing on fees and what, 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 what. And I, I understood that. And... But also, I was like, okay, how do I make something? I can't just live on off on a salary. Yeah, is there a way that we can actually maybe compensate me? And he structured that uh, game bonus structure where if you play ten games or if you play certain minutes, you get so much and that mm. and that and that. Yeah, it's strange. I'll come back to that uh, because then there's a very strange relationship then you would go on to have uh, with a certain Eric Tinkler as coach at yeah. Orlando Pirates. I want to touch on the mental illness. I want to touch on who then steps in when Mpo Makola is struggling. Who then steps in when Mpo leaves then to go and join a Pulaguane City? Who then, the contract situation is even worse. You sign a contract with no figures. So what are you playing for? Are you playing that one day your grave has a tombstone on it? What are you playing for if they are not paying you? You are a family man. I know you've got two boys that yeah. you love dearly. Yeah. Um, you, you got a family. So yeah. that for me, again, mm -hmm. I'll include a couple of WhatsApp voice notes. When you talk about strangeness of contracts, I'll come through. I'll talk about Eric Tinkler. Then you having to go, if I'm not mistaken, you still had about five months of your contract at Cape Town City. You had played 94 games. You were heading to your 100th game. Any minute, any moment in that season yeah. didn't happen. Good evening, Robert, and good evening to your guest, Mpo. Hi, a quick one, Robert, just to find out from Mpo, how far is he with uh, development of youth in Limpopo? Because it's like he started his games just like the Piri ones wherein we had tournament. He had one in Limpopo just to know if he still continuing or he stopped. Anyway, a good player, and I want to know, is he out or is he still carrying on? Is age not a burden to him now? Good choice always. Get them in. All right, thank you so much indeed. We'll find out later if he's still carrying on. I think that's one of the key questions that we need to find out from this man before we release him. Uh, but the games that he talks about, he says you had started them. Are they still on? Yeah. Um, we just took a break during uh, covid uh, because obviously, I mean, with the games, I remember we used to play in December. Yeah. And the games I held in December in the PSL was, so there was a clash and I couldn't be there to honor the games. And we took a break for like two years because of COVID as well. Mm -hmm. And this year, we're trying our best to bring the games back in December. Sponsor still there? Uh, we had Better Bet. I was the ambassador at the time yeah. and they really came in and they did everything for us. There isn't any formal sponsors right now, but we're looking to get something very solid. All right, when we come back from the break, we continue our conversation. Lots of your WhatsApp voice notes. We'll get to that. We'll find out what people are saying on the YouTube channel as well. Comments coming through all around. It's a weird situation that the, he finds himself in because, trust me, uh, what I heard has happened to him at Bulugwane. I've never heard of something like that. It's kickoff time. The mighty box take on the world. He's got one already and he's going to get another. 
The Rugby World Cup. All the news. All the views. Springboks with a penalty advantage. All the action. Right here on Marawa Sports Worldwide. They have to scramble. Hashtag MSW with Marawa on 947. Zuma FM, Rise FM and Sowetan Live. You asked for bigger payouts and now you've got it with Lotto Star's exclusive Wheel Rush Brevet Games. With a single spin of the wheels, you could slot your way to instant payouts of up to 20 million rand. Bet now on Hot Hot Fruit Brevet, Egyptian Dreams Deluxe Brevet, Laughing Buddha Brevet and many more. Lotto Star, your world of live games. Lotto Star is licensed by the Impomalanga Economic Regulator. No under 18s. National Responsible Gambling Program. 0800 006 T's and C's apply. All games are fixed on betting events. Do you aspire to live in the heart of waterfall? Well, now you can. Master your lifestyle in a Poland designer apartment. Three bedroom luxury apartments and penthouses with integrated smeg appliances and top of the range finishes. Including a state of the art award winning lifestyle center comprising of La Buquera restaurant, a half basketball court, gym, boardroom, concierge, Little Hill Montessori School, and more. Apply now for your Ball and Green Bond with massive 20-year savings. T's and C's apply. Visit ballin.co.za. When you choose Plascon, you choose strong and get your share of 10 million rand in guaranteed rewards. Spend a minimum of 1,500 rand on any Plascon products and claim your share. Plus, you'll be placed in the daily draw for the chance to win a thousand rand grocery voucher and the fortnight draw for the chance to win one of seven inverters worth 10,000 rand. Competition ends 30 September. T's and C's apply. Details at pluscon.com. Honey? Mike? Michael? Yeah? What stage load shedding are we today? Six. No, wait. Four. No, looks like six again. Oh, wait. We're zone 12. We're zone 11. Things are complicated enough. Buying a car shouldn't be one of them. Suzuki offers a wide range of cars that are reliable, affordable, and fuel efficient. They're packed with features and fun to drive. Make the easy choice and have it all with Suzuki today. Visit suzukiauto.co.za to book your test drive. Mom, I don't want to go to school. Flight Center's there for you when the holidays can't come fast enough. With family deals to get you to the beach, the pool, and kids' clubs sooner than you can say, are we there yet? Book your flights, holiday packages, cruises, tours, car hire, and more. Contact your very own travel expert at Flight Center today. Or visit flightcenter.co.za. Flight Center. Welcome to a fantastic shopping workout. Today we're going to activate and flex that financial muscle. Let's start with the basics. In three, two, one. And let's split and stretch the pavement. Split and stretch the pavement. Are you with me? When you don't feel the burn in your pocket, that's how you know you're doing it right. Come on now. Warm up to checking out to Payflex today. Shop now and pay later over four installments at 0% interest. Payflex, this is shopping. It's the infamous room dividers. I think the hiring of Eddie Jones by the Australian was a publicity that gone wrong. I don't know what's your take. Publicity that went wrong, do you guys agree? With the, the current team, I think Eddie, Eddie Jones has taken a team of young players, moments of brilliance, and then we have you know, uh, long periods of stupidity, uh, and that is a reflection in the skill level in the game. It just there's no, there's no points in them, so they're just a, it's just a shambles. It's just a hard watch. I'm not a fan at the moment of that style. Tanda Banana, your final take on Eddie Jones. And if he has to go, he has to go. I mean, so you January. could see it was an actual project. Shots fired. It's the infamous room dividers. Every Tuesday from 6 to 7 p.m. was Robert, Tando, and Ashwin. Ashwin. Hashtag MSW. Hashtag MSW. Wednesday nights, soccer nights, your nights. Uh, Rob, it's the Boko Year, Rob. You know, after that uh, Coca-Cola Cup uh, squad, uh, the team went on a downward uh, a spiral and there was a bit of uh, positivity and resurgence when the club recruited uh, the likes of Umpoma Kola. I think they had Kennedy Mwini there, uh, Dove Wome, Edward Mangele, and I think they had um, Zigeise Mashaba. And they also had that exciting uh, left-footed player, uh, Nua Chivuta. Palus Masehe was there as well. Uh, Terence Mashiro, Ayanda 
Mugaba and Tabo Matlaba was there as well and for me that was one of the most exciting Free State Stars team that I've ever watched after the Coca-Cola squad and I just and they played with so much energy and I believe that team they would have won gone to be a competitive team if it was not uh, dismantled with players being sold uh, but my question to Umpo who is that coach that has contributed uh, to your development because you are one of the uh, technically and tactically a uh, well developed uh, player uh, that I've ever watched uh, be it from your time at Free State Stars Orlando Pirates uh, your decision making is uh, well plus I just want to hear who is that coach that has contributed to your development thank you so much Thank you so much indeed. And Paul, I'm going to ask of you short, sharp answers to these questions. I've got so many voice notes lined up here. Uh, which is that coach? Which one of the many? Um, I think I can't specifically point out one, mm-hmm. but I got maybe like I think three, which I think played a huge role in my development. One, uh, the late Asim Tuleng, when I was still at Chiefs. Um, two, Tabo Malebu. Uh, he's a coach from Alex. Mm-hmm. I think when I left the Chiefs Academy when I was 17, he took me in, played uh, township football, but he believed in me so much that he actually bought me a medicine ball to start kicking it around My because goodness. of the technique that I had. And yeah. I don't know how many free kicks I scored in the league or in the, yeah, when I was still young. But um, the one that did really play a huge role has to be Jesse Queen the Hody. Wow, Harold, yeah. Jesse Queen. Yes. Sir. Oh, what a player, man! My melody sundowns at their best. Yeah. The man with the biggest calf muscles you'll find. <laughs> <laughs> Him, <laughs> the likes of Iwi Kambule. Yeah. And I know he loves this show. Mm. So, Jazzy Queen, anytime, yes. Baba, anytime. Yeah. Getting the praises from the men. <laughs> and thank you for giving us Umpo. Afternoon to you, Rob. Afternoon to your listeners speaking to Mzikona Kul. As we are speaking, I'm smiling because that's my, that's my favorite player. That I love to watch when he's playing. Rob, you know, Rob, there are people who are killing our players. There are, there are people who are killing our players. You know, it's so sad for me. You know, I was very, very sad when I heard that Mpomakola is leaving Orlando Pirates. I, I, I feel so sad. I was so sad. I was uh, almost crying because Mpomakola is a player. If, you know, if you're a coach, you can't be coach uh, Mpomakola. If you know football, you said you go to Mpo, you said Mpo, you know what you're going to do. Go there and do the, the, the dirty work. So, Rob, you got my favorite player. Uh, Mpomakola, my friend, hey, I, I, I can't wait to see you again doing your dirty job because there are coaches who come here in South Africa and killing our football. They come in and they said they, we mustn't play the way we are playing. We are playing. You can't do that. You can't telling the Soweto uh, boy that he must change the way he's playing. And then you have to emulate the overseas uh, players. These players, they are our players. They are coming from a class. Mpomakola is a, a player. Hey, Mpomfet, who's a Glalili Paul and Far Praia? Hey, Robert. Ah, Mpomakola, I'm a person who is a player. Thank you. Oh, man, that, that's... Why? How do you respond? That, that is pure <laughs> love for the work that you do. Yeah. Damn. You change people's lives. It takes something for a person to call in and almost show you brotherly love like that. And it doesn't know you from above, so knows yeah. your work. You felt yeah. that. Yeah, I felt that. Sure. Yeah, sorry, man. Sorry. I, I mean, I know it's difficult because there's so many ups and downs that the career has brought through. And when somebody phones like that and it's almost like, let me try and paraphrase something that he said. He says, no coach can coach you. That's his opinion. I leave it that and I respect that. Yeah. But has there been a coach who's tried to change you and in the process destroyed who you were as a player? I don't think there's any coach uh, that, has ch- that has tried to change my style of play uh, because I've never really been a difficult player to coach. Yeah. Yeah, and <clears throat> for that I'm really grateful for that, and I've learned so much from every coach that I've I've been with. I mean, the tears that are 
flowing down your cheeks right now, is that from a sense of understanding how deeply football and your role has played? So when people started deserting you, when people started disappearing from within your presence and you had nowhere to go when you weren't understanding what's happening in Cape Town, does something like that make you feel in the end, poor that it was worth it? Yeah, Rob, I mean, like I said, we, we're human. Yeah. You know? And when you, sac when you sacrifice so much of you for football, you know, it's, and today you're sitting and you're like, what have I done to football that it's doing this to me? Like, mm. is there something wrong that I did? you know, for me to be at this position that I'm in, you know. But, um, yeah, Rob, I'm just glad I'm, I was in the dungeon for a very long time, and I'm just glad I got to pull myself out. Yeah. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm just a positive person now, and I'm just trying to pick up the pieces and move on with life. There was a stage you said that you had, you had wanted to give up. What was pushing you there? Like I said, like I felt like I had worked so much to be where I was at the time in my career. Yeah. And it literally took nothing for me to actually go down again and find myself in the position that I was, you know, uh, and especially emotionally. Mm. And, you know, so much happened, especially when I was at Cape Town, when I started when I felt first that, when I had the first incident of the rev and the suspension, mm. I felt like uh, I didn't have the support that I needed. Uh, the team, yes, they were there for me, you know, but from an emotional point of view, I don't feel like a lot of people or the team was there for me. And I dealt with so much on my own, mm. you know, and it kind of like, it did mess me up a bit, Rob, mm. you know, when I came back, it took me a bit of a while to actually get to my form, to get my form back. And when that happened, I don't know, these things just happen in life that you cannot explain. You know, I cannot explain the incidents that happened with the refs yeah. on both occasions. I don't know what happened. Till this day, I don't know what pushed me to go through those, to do what I did, you know. Mm. But I remember the second incident, I just lost two of my cousins, very close cousins, were my, the same age as me. And one, he lost his life when he was in Cape Town. And I was the only family member that was there. So I had to ID him, mm. go to home affairs, because he lost his... Uh, ID, get his ID, go to get his things sorted, make sure he is on a plane back to Joburg and his, the funeral arrangement. I was doing that by myself, waking up every day at five o'clock, making sure that I'm back on time for training as well. You know, it affected me, but nobody could see it, you know. But I pushed myself still, you know. So I'm so much happened, Rob, and like I said, one day on my podcast, I'll speak mm -hmm. about these things. And we wait. I mean, we wait. And uh, and again, I said to you, Ophi, I'm not going to be that person that pushes you. Yeah. You still have what I consider a career. And there are a lot of very emotional things yeah. that are still to come out. I'll be one of those who listen and support your podcast from beginning to end. Make no doubt about that. Yeah. Um, I, I think I have an idea of a few of the things that have happened to you. Um, the your incident with the assistant referee Baloy, your incident with Abungile Tom, all of those. I mean, you were a player that hadn't even ever had a red card. Yeah. Up until that, those sequence of events, 2022, 2019 yeah. happened. And then you go and support the plight of going to Pulukwane. Mm -hmm. Before that, 
I'm, I'm trying to chase, man. I'm, time is chasing me, and I've got all these voice notes, and I'm like, <laughs> we're not going to make it. We're not going to get to the end of the Comrades Marathon line. Eric Tinkler, what happened? Eric Tinkler, I've had a good relationship with him. Yeah. Even at Pirates. I think I played one of my best seasons under him at Pirates as well. Uh, at Cape Town City, I don't really know what happened. Prior to me leaving Rob, I had played 15 games before Jan. Yes. Yeah. Everything was good. Uh, we'd spoken to the chairman about how much they valued me and how much they really wanted me to be a part of the team even after I retire, you know. But boom, out of nowhere, January the 15th, just before, not, not January the 15th, just before the window period actually closed. Mm -hmm. Got a call into the office. Eric is there. Chairman is there. You're being released. Okay. The last game I played, I started the game. So, and I've been playing well. Yeah. My numbers speak for themselves. But they know? never gave you your stats, from what I understand. Initially, they, they didn't give you. <coughs> no. Or didn't give you access to your stats. They never gave me my stats, but I, I, I got to access my stats elsewhere, you know. I always check my games. So yeah. Every time I play, I would always go do my corrections, check the mistakes that I've made so I can improve, improve on the next game. So I've always known what my stats look like. So your stats warranted you, in your opinion. You're a professional. You're not yeah. going to come talk smack here. Mm -hmm. Your stats would have warranted you continuing, at least for the five months. 100%. But there was this urgent need for you to go. Mm -hmm. And it was just a shock. Uh, not only for me, but also my colleagues at the time, <clears throat> to a point where Tammy actually, Mkiza at the yeah. time, the captain, they called a meeting uh, to get an explanation on why why was Mpo released, based on what? Mm. He's been a top professional in the team. All these boys value him so much, the youngsters, he's, you know, what happened? They needed an explanation from the coaches, and uh, and I don't know what they were told, but yeah. I had to move and I, I moved. All right. I've got a minute, but I, I want to squeeze this in because now you, you move. You go to a Bologna city that is in a lower division. Mm -hmm. It's, again, mentally, you have to humble yourself. Yeah. Whether humiliating is a different story, but you, you humble yourself because now you've got a project. You've got a project mm -hmm. to try to bring up this team. You yeah. have a conversation with the chairman. He says, I want you to help us to mm -hmm. bring the team up. And you agree to this project. Yeah. And then the team gets promoted. Great celebrations on TV that we all see. But then the written document, which is the legal document called a contract, comes up, but that contract has absolutely no figures in it. Yes, Rob. And as just said, more than anything, I'm not even going to lie to you. Um, you know, I've, that incident did really uh, mess me up because I didn't want anything to do with football for, I think, for 32 three months. I yeah. tried to train on my own, but I would lose motivation and I would just keep myself in the house, you know. But more than anything, what disappointed me is the chairman not taking my calls, not taking, returning my messages after we had won the league, you know. Before we won the league, we were always on the call. Mm. But please help the team, you know. Like, ah, oh, chairman, don't worry, we're going to win the league on the last day. You and, and you prayed, Ramadan <sighs> kicked in, you sacrificed, the prayer worked, the strength of prayer worked, the strength of professionalism worked, and then the chairman avoids your calls. Avoids my calls, uh, doesn't come and sit with me and tell me, oh, you know what, this is what's happening and we're trying to get young players, maybe, yeah. you know, but he sends someone else, you know, someone that I never... S uh, spoke to about contracts or anything like that, you know. And yeah, that was really disappointing and I was disappointed in that. But nonetheless, I'm just glad that our league uh, has jumped in and they've tried to help me in those regards. And yeah, that matter is actually with the league right now. And Would you play for them again? Just sorry, yes or no? No. You won't? I could never. You could never? No. All right. Yeah. We'll have to do this again, Paul. Um I want to thank you, man. I want to thank you for your bravery. Yeah. Apologies for all the WhatsApp voice notes. I've not been able to play out or convince this man to come back again. It's an <laughs> important chat. It shows that you and I have never spoken at length. 
yeah. in depth like we're doing tonight. Um, good luck to you. Good luck to the family. Um, I think uh, Mulemo, Milani need you more than most. Yeah. So look after them. We want them to be as great as you in whatever field that they choose. Stay a soldier, sir. We appreciate you. Thank you so much, Rob. Thank you for having me here. Catch you again tomorrow. Big show. Big show tomorrow. Again. It's a big show. That's all I'm going to say. It's here. The Rugby World Cup. Springboks with a penalty advantage. Tracked by Marawa every day. Hashtag MSW on 947. Vuma FM, Rise FM and Sowetan Live.